Uh, you know, obviously, I couldn't be prouder of my squad. And um, for me, in my head, it's played over and over that, um, you know, quitters never win and, and um, you know, winners never quit. And this team has always been a winning team, a winning fighting mentality. And people always ask questions about the, the, the start. And I've said, if you've been watching this team the same way I have, you already know we're winners. You know they're going to play hard and they're not going to quit. And that's why, truly, that's played over and over and over in my mind that there's a group of winners and these girls aren't going to quit. And what you found is they pushed past that threshold and, you know, did something that's very difficult to do. Um, and that is play a great team in Arlington to fight and battle all the way through regardless of what the starter finish is they found a way to get it done and they did it in gosh signature fashion uh, Denasia to be 100% from the three and uh, well Brooke I generally think Brooke's a great free throw shooter um, you know nine for nine is just awesome she really sealed those for us they boosted their team in different ways obviously Kennedy was seeing a lot of pressure tonight 24 Evans is to me one of the best lockdown on ball defenders in this conference and she was very frustrating at times but her teammates really stepped up and helped alleviate some of that stress for her and our kids you know down the stretch they didn't just you know hold them they went past and exceeded um, the expectations probably of many but not of them they already knew that they were going to close this game out and really the team took over I had to do very little coaching outside of making sure that you know I manage small moments coach can you tell us a little bit about uh, play for K and why this is in a, a, an important game for your program I think it's an it's important to recognize across the board, right? Cancer awareness. We probably all in here have been touched by cancer, sadly, in some way, shape, or form. And so when the initiative initially got started, it started with Kay Yao. And Kay Yao is, as at NC State, as most people know, with, with Jimmy V as well. And uh, it started out with breast cancer. And so there was a huge initiative by the WBCA, the Women's Basketball Association, to get it rolling in ways of awareness. Well, it switched over quickly to all cancer awareness. And so it turned into this pink initiative, if you will, to raise money and awareness. A lot of us in the Sunbelt Conference raise money in these games you know for us a portion will go back to Kay Yow, but a portion will go back here to you know someone here locally in Hayes County and so I think that's important largely because we know that's a it's a really tough battle and one of the um quotes I used today was was specific to that you know to make sure that we understand that it's through the fight that you earn the opportunities that you have later and whether it's something as ugly as cancer something as small as a game of basketball we can honor what these men and women are fighting by raising awareness and playing th this game to the best of our ability today. Coach, what impressed you the most about your team in today's game? You know, I think some people are going to appoint to the entire uh, to the the entire game, and I'm not that far from it. Uh, my expectation is we go in every game we're going to win. And I know that our team is prepared. I'll be honest with you, I don't think we paired, prepared any different than we did before as far as the <clears throat> X's and O's piece of it. I think our team just said en enough is enough. And I go back to that quote again, you know, that, that winners never quit and quitters never win. And that was a mentality you saw. They pushed past that threshold. And then they hit a point where they knew because Hood hit that three. And I was like, I generally, I would have been like, no. And then I looked at the score. I was like, oh, you'd be fine. You know, if we, we missed it, hopefully time and score. But that, that level of confidence you don't want to mess with. You kind of just let the players play. Coach, that second quarter, um, UTA jumped out to like an 11-0 run. And you guys struggled offensively. Uh, what was the message going into halftime? Just making sure that we stayed sound defensively, understanding where that they got you know a lot of that energy from. A lot of that energy came from uh, Barbara, right? Barbara Benson, Marie's sister. Uh, she did a great job of hitting seams. Uh, the young woman really is one for nine from the three, so that three she hit is really out of character as far as what she does, but she was a big catalyst to get them going. So making sure we had to make that adjustment was important. Our players did a good job of that. How were you getting those open looks along the three-pointer? Was, was the other team sacking off of you, or were you moving off of screens? What was happening there? Um, just staying patient through the offense. You know, we're going to move the ball. So when I have my open looks, I just do my job and finish the shot. Uh, Brooke, at your height, how do you get to so many rebounds? Um, I mean, rebounding to me is just like a want. So if like I want it, then I'm going to go get it. So I mean, at this point, I'm confident in my rebounding. I've been rebounding since high school, so I don't really see it as a, you know, something abnormal for me to rebound. I expect I'm like very uh, have high expectations for myself in rebounding, so I just try to you know track the ball and just beat my player to the spot. You know, you guys were down heading into the fourth quarter, and you've been in some tight spots before. What was different about this game where you guys were able to pull it out? 
I think just the preparation leading into this game, um, it, the past couple weeks we've been really focusing on staying confident, poised through adversity. Um, a lot of situations in practice, whether we're up, whether we're down, you know, making sure that we do the little things right. And I think it really showed that uh, we were able to execute that in the fourth quarter. Danae Gino, Kennedy had 12 assists today. How much of a facili- how much does her facilitating help the team? Um, it helps us a lot because without the point guard, we can't really get started in the offense. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sunday, um, and he was very open with uh, supporting a lot of uh, women's basketball. So can y'all kind of talk about uh, how he's impacted you and uh, what the Moms and the Pals really means to y'all? Um, I mean, to me, Mama mentality is just having confidence in yourself, um, no doubt in your soul that, you know, you're meant to be on the court and that um, no one's better than you. You just, you got to go get it. And um, I think th- like he really showed like toughness, and I try to emulate that. <clears throat> yeah, same. I just think my mentality is just going out and being a competitor. You know, he he was a great player, but what really gets to me the most is what he started doing after his career and how he was able to start change using his platform for women's basketball. Yeah, the mentality I don't think any athlete really understands unless you're at that elite level because Kobe, one of the things he said was that um, if somebody talks about competing, then the, you know they're not even worth it because he already feels he's in a totally different level for because of preparation, right? And then a piece that I appreciate as a parent is the fact that he's always said if he's going to sacrifice anything, it's always sleep. And that's what he, he did. He sacrificed sleep, right? So he would go get his workouts in, then he would take the helicopter and get home to his family to take the kids to school. That was very important to him. He always said he'd, he'd sacrifice sleep. And so... Um, you know, I think that's just beautiful to see as a parent and then to turn around and, and be a father. You know, I'm a mother of three sons to be a father of four daughters and use the platform um, that he has as just a phenomenal player to be able to step up and speak up for young women and to teach the game. I mean, I, you know, I, I think is, is, is something that's unheard of and to be able to do it in the fashion that he did and uh, make everyone truly watch the women's game and appreciate it even more is something that, you know, I hope that people carry on. You've already seen it through the hashtag of, of girl dads, whether it be, you know, just our own players posting, but when you see a lot of these professional players as well posting, you know, you know, Title IX has come a long way, but to, to have someone like Kobe Bryant start this uh, movement is, is exciting, and I really hope that it continues to understand that these young women work just as hard. Um, just because we don't play above the rim, or very few of us play above the rim, doesn't mean that the work, sweat, dedication behind closed doors doesn't go into it. And as, as student athletes, I, I do appreciate that.